Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn about international relations. Today's topics are tariffs and the barriers to free trade. So the big question here is, why was it so hard to establish free trade? A fun fact about the world is that free trade is a historically new phenomenon. Up until the end of World War II, the norm around the world was that states set up tariffs, or import taxes, on imported goods. So when one country tried to sell its products in another country, that second country would tax the products coming in and thereby forcing the products to be sold at a higher rate in those markets. Now, as we all know, taxes aren't particular fun, aren't particularly fun, but tariffs are actually good at bolstering domestic companies. If I tax imported goods in my country, then that makes my own products more competitive within my borders because the other competing products from outside the country are more expensive. So this protects the companies that are within my own borders, my own companies. But on the other hand, Econ 101 tells us that taxes raise consumer prices, and that's generally a bad thing. So there's a trade-off here. To illustrate this trade-off a little bit further, let's consider the plight of the Mexican winery. So Mexico doesn't have the biggest grape-producing climate in the world. It's not really that great at producing grapes. So a made-up Mexican winery, which I'm calling El Vino Nacional, would have to spend much more money to produce quality grapes than your average winery would. And the company would have to pass that on, those additional costs, on to consumers, or they would risk go, going out of business because they can't just run their business at a loss and be sustainable over the course of the long term. So the fact that it costs them more to make more or better grapes means they're going to have to charge more for their bottles of wine. Now, consider a predatory California winery. California has a great climate for grapes and can make wine with ease. So these California companies can flood the Mexican market with wine and put El Vino Nacional out of business. But this is a problem if you're the Mexican government because this means that all of the Mexican wine money is being funneled out of Mexico and going into California because all of this wine is going to these California-based companies. Now, one solution, if you're the Mexican government, is to impose tariffs. If Mexico taxes the imported wine from California, the prices for Vino Nacional's wine are going to be competitive with the Californian wines. And so the money that would otherwise be funneling out of the country and into California will stay in Mexico. So that's good for Mexico, if you're the Mexican government. Now, on the other hand, to see the other side of the story, consider tequila makers in California. California doesn't have the best agave producing climate, and so a Californian tequila company would have to spend much more money to produce quality tequila than a Mexican tequila company. And this Californian company is going to have to produce, or it's going to have to pass this additional cost on to consumers or go out of business for the same reason why the Mexican winery has to do that. It has to pass these costs on to the consumers. But if you're a predatory Mexican tequila company, then, well, you live in Mexico, you have a great climate for agave, and you can make wonderful tequila. And so you can export your tequila into California. The Mexican tequila companies can flood the California market with Mexican tequila, drive these California companies out of business. And that's great for Mexico, but that's bad for California because this is funneling American money out of California and into Mexico. So California's solution, or the solution for the United States, is to impose a tariff on the tequila, and that will raise the prices of the Mexican tequila within the borders of California and force California consumers to, buy the Mex or to not buy the Mexican tequila and rather buy the Californian tequila. So this tequila money that was otherwise flooding out of California is going to stay within California. So the outcome, when both of these guys are establishing these tariffs to produce or to, to protect the companies within their own borders, the Mexican winery and the California tequila company, you get tariffs everywhere. You get Mexico taxing imports from California and California taxing imports from Mexico. And you end up having everybody lose because you have an inefficient economy. There are taxes going around. And like we said before, Econ 101 tells us that, well, having taxes leads to an inefficient economy and you'd be better off just removing those taxes and let everything run smoothly. To see how this works in terms of a strategic model, let's look at it this way. Let's think of this as California and Mexico having a choice to make where they both choose whether to tax the other guy or have free trade. So if California chooses freedom, then it's not going to tax Mexican products. And if it chooses taxation, then it will. And likewise, if Mexico chooses freedom, then there aren't any tariffs. If Mexico chooses taxation, then there are. So let's think about the outcomes here. So there are four different outcomes, right? Two strategies for each player leads to four outcomes. 
and let's think about which outcomes are most preferred for Mexico and which outcomes are least preferred. Let's start with the least preferred outcomes. Well, if Mexico allows for free trade and California taxes the Mexican winery, then what happens is the Mexican products are bad, and so they're not going to work on the Californian uh, market, but the Californian products are going to work in the Mexican market. So this is really good for California because California's industries get propped up and do very well, but the Mexican industries do horribly. And so this is the worst outcome for Mexico. It's going to get a zero. On the other hand, the best outcome for Mexico is the reverse of that. If Mexico taxes the California wineries, then that protects the Mexican wineries, and that allows the Mexican wineries to flourish, even though they wouldn't without this tax. And California does not tax here, so Mexico, Mexico does very well selling its tequila in California. So that's its best outcome. Now, deciding between these other two outcomes, free trade is the next best outcome. It's the second best outcome. And the reason for that is the alternative is taxation for everybody. But we know that a free market is more efficient than a market where there's just taxation going around everywhere. So this outcome is going to be better than this outcome for Mexico. And we can do something very similar. It's just the, the exact same thing for California, but in reverse. So California prefers the outcome where California Oh, sorry, rather California least prefers the outcome where California has free trade and doesn't tax Mexican products, but Mexican product Mexico does tax Californian products. That's that outcome right there. California's best outcome is where California taxes Mexican products, but Mexico does not tax Californian products. And similarly with the Mexican outcome here before, we have the free trade being better for California than the outcome where both of them mutually tax each other. Now, this, as it turns out, it's called the free trade game, but it's just a prisoner's dilemma. And so if you want to pause the video and see for yourself, you can check it out and make sure. But regardless of what the other guy is doing, it's in each individual actor's best interest to tax the other guy. And so what we can conclude from that is that since it's better for the individuals to tax regardless of what the other person is doing, you end up at the outcome where both of the actors tax. And so you end up with this outcome where they're both just getting one point, even though this free trade outcome is mutually better. They both get two here. That's better for both of them, but it's unsustainable because each of them would rather tax knowing that the other one would choose to have free trade. And so that's why you have this drama when it comes to creating free trade. It's hard to create free trade because the incentives tell you as a country that you should be levying taxes to force your own companies to do well and to make sure that your products can really actually function and your money will not be funneled out of your country to the importers. But there's a new puzzle here. We've seen this model. We know that we have an outcome where there's mutual taxation. The new puzzle is that the prisoner's dilemma predicts that we will see high levels of tariffs. And while this was true before World War II, this is not the case anymore. And so the new question is, how have states maintained free trade agreements recently? And while we won't be getting into that in the next video, we will be trying to talk about those things in a couple of videos from now. So think about that. Let that sit around in your head for a while and try to figure out, well, you know, how do we end up getting these free, free trade outcomes? Why are these free trade outcomes actually sustainable in the long term, even though our prediction from this game was the opposite? So think about that. And then next time we'll actually be talking about arms races. Join me then. Bye.